Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am starting my Reading Rush vlog. So for the Reading Rush, I am hoping to read three books, um, and they all have super high ratings on Goodreads. The lowest rated one is uh, 4.26, so I have super high hopes for all three. So just as a quick recap, I am reading The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune for the Birthstone Challenge and also uh, the Starts with The Challenge. I'm reading Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osiman for the First Book You Touch Challenge and Inspired by a Movie You've Seen Challenge. And then I'm reading The Electric State by Simon Stollenhog for the Outside of Your House Challenge, which is why we're here. This is our back deck right near the outside. A genre you want to read more of. So this is illustrated, not US, UK, and also translated, and on a different continent, which it's set on a dystopian America and I live in Australia right now. So, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the first one, which is The Electric State. So, like I said, this is illustrated, and there's not that much text on each page, so I'm really hopeful that I'll be able to finish this like in one sitting out here today. I'm just gonna plop my butt here for a few hours and make my way through. Okay, so this is about a young girl in a post-apocalyptic dystopian America where a technology has taken over and I believe there's been like a nuclear war slash a rise of technology where people get addicted and then they're like lost in that tech world. Um, it's kind of like a much darker Ready Player One and she is traveling across this deserted America with her robot companion. Um, so as we start out she's in the Mojave Desert and it's, it's already very dark because as you can see there are people who were too addicted and then they died. And these are just, you know, all their bodies in the Mohawk Desert. So I think that this is, yeah, just gonna be dark. And I suspect, like, I have hope that this might be a five star for me. So our main character, Michelle, was brought up in the foster care system. And there is a queer relationship in here between her and a girl named Amanda, which I totally didn't know. I don't think it's shelved on Goodreads, but that was a very pleasant development. So they're out of Pacifica and now we are into the mountains section. I just want to pop in here and remind you guys how brilliant the art is. So like here's one of the folds and these are cable laying machines that are in the mountains. And she talks about them like they're huge turtles so just kind of amble across the road. Um, so the journey continues and we are in the central valley now. So. I'm absolutely loving this. I think I'm going to hunt down and buy everything Simon Stollenhog has ever made. I know that he did something else called Tales from the Loop, and I will be getting on that like immediately. And this is a really accurate representation of how society is. So the, that's the suburbs, and these are all the lines to all the Neurocaster helmets that people are wearing and becoming obsessed with. And she's talking about how her stepmom, Bridget, she found her at the bottom of the pool, but she wasn't dead yet. Like the Neurocaster was still like in control of her brain and was keeping her lips moving. But then like once they took their Neurocaster off her, she curled up and just like died. And I was like, creepy. So I just finished the book and it's sitting somewhere between a four and a half and a five. I think I need to sit on it think about it but i'm really cold my hands are cold i don't know how long it's been maybe about 30 minutes 40 minutes an hour i have no idea but this was so so good um i will tell you guys more when i wrap up at the end but yeah this was amazing hey guys so it's actually the next day and last night i did something pretty naughty i read half of the house on the cerulean sea by tj clune this story is so cute you guys so adorable just all the feels I'm following linus who is kind of uh, an orphanage inspector for this ministry that's very cold and dour and he lives in a city and it feels very much like a lemony snicket uh, type vibe, but Linus himself is really soft and sweet on the inside even though he works and he's a cog in like this very cold machine and he is sent to this island where there's an orphanage for pretty much extremely dangerous magical children and some of them are just so so cute like 
There is a wyvern, which is a very tiny dragon that's smaller than a cat, and it's clumsy and it keeps tripping over its wings and it hoards buttons. I was dying. There's also like an amorphous jelly-like, jellyfish-like creature whose wish is to be a bellhop. And I'm just like, oh my God, so cute. There's a forest sprite, there's a garden gnome, and then, then there's also the antichrist, which is just the six-year-old boy who's very precocious and likes to scare the living daylights out of Linus. But the cherry on top of this absolutely adorable magical Sunday is the caretaker, Arthur Parnassus, who would do anything for the kids and he really lets them kind of blossom and get confidence after they've been like shuttled around in the orphanage system for a long time and people are really scared of them and it's just so sweet and so lovely and right now I'm half of the way through and it's definitely going to be somewhere between a four and a five so I'm so so happy thrilled. I can't wait to see where it goes. I love TJ Klune and if you guys don't know, he wrote my favorite dark duology of all time, uh, Withered and Seer and Crisp and Seer. It's very dark. It's nothing, nothing like The House on the Cerulean Sea, but it's very, very dark, like dystopian, post-apocalyptic, gritty. Uh, and then he also wrote The Bones Beneath Our Skin, which is a first contact aliens story with MM romance, and it was just really, really adorable as well. So the three books I've read by TJ Klune have been four and a half, four and a half, and five stars. So my hopes are high. Hey guys, I just have another update. So we did go to the grocery store. I picked up two, like, makeup things. Uh, there are two brands that I've never tried before. They're Australian brands that are cruelty-free and vegan. Emco Beauty, Instant Brows in medium dark, mud. <laughs> um, I got their foundation in the lightest shade possible, which is ivory. Now I've seen some reviews that said like, this isn't that light of a shade and I am like super, super fair skinned. So fingers crossed that this will be usable. I also wanted to update you guys on finishing 75% of The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. It is continuing to be so, so cute and charming and just found out what Arthur's secret is. I want to see what happens and also the MM romance in here is just so cute and soft and cuddly and I just love it with my whole heart so I am back in my pajamas <laughs> and I'm gonna do some more work today uh, writing and editing so um, I will catch up to you guys later tonight hopefully with more reading hi guys so it is Wednesday afternoon I started reading another book for a different challenge this is Lola um, by Melissa Scrivener Love this is about um, following Lola, who is the female leader of a gang in Los Angeles. So this is for the continent other than my own because I live in Australia. Um, so this is in North America. So I just could not put this down. I'm like quite a way through it. Um, and then also during this week, I have been reading um, The History of the World in 50 Dogs by Mackenzie Lee, um, who I know that there's some controversy with Mackenzie Lee, but this was a Christmas gift given to me by dear friends because I love dogs. Um, so I decided to read it anyway, and it is really dear. Uh, this is breaking down historical moments where dogs played a really important role, and it is just absolutely so adorable. And I'm gonna use this for the genre you want to read more of, which for me is nonfiction, um, and especially historical fiction. Uh, and especially historical nonfiction is one of my big weaknesses. So these are two that I'm currently reading that have been added into this week's TBR, um, as well as in the future, the two that I have left are Call Me By Your Name, which is the first book I touched and the movie adaptation. Uh, and then By The Worlds by Claudia Gray, which is the second one. And this will be for the birthstone challenge. Now. I'm gonna talk about what book I just finished, and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Oh my God, guys, it was so, so cute. Like my little heart is bursting. I gave it four and a half stars. It is absolutely adorable. Um, it would have got five stars, but I didn't cry. Like I didn't cry. It almost got me like, like the form of a little tears, but 
I didn't quite cry, so it's a four and a half, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Okay guys, and I met, as I mentioned yesterday, when my husband and I went grocery shopping, I happened to get two new beauty products. Um, they're both vegan and cruelty free, which was nice to see, but I've never tried the brands before. So the first one was I needed a new eyebrow pencil. Usually I use Tarte's Amazonian clay waterproof brow pencil. And it usually costs, I think, like $35, which is hella expensive, but it lasts all day and I've used it for years. However, this one cost, I think, $5. <laughs> so I wanted to see if it could compete. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, I think it worked pretty well. I mean, my brows are definitely dark, so it definitely has good payoff. Um, yeah, so I do recommend this one, I suppose. Um, and then the other thing I got was foundation. So this is the foundation I got. And I will say that it is, I think, half a shade darker than my natural skin tone. I think that this is my perfect summertime shade when I have a little bit of a tan, but it's winter right now in Australia, so I'm pretty, pretty pale. So um, I don't know, tell me what you guys think in the comments. I don't think it's too crazy, like the difference, but like this is, I guess, like my natural skin tone. Um, and then this is like a tiny, tiny bit uh, tanner. Hi guys, so it's later on on Wednesday. I have read for a few hours today and I actually did finish Lola. This is about a female gang leader in LA whose name is Lola and basically, she is the stealth leader of the gang. Everyone thinks it's her boyfriend who's the leader, but actually she is the mastermind behind it all. So when there's a drop that happens, um, that's supposed to be a switch uh, cash for heroin, heroin, something goes very wrong, and she is basically given a week to live to figure out how to get both the heroin and the money back um, to one of like the kingpins. Um, and then the story goes from there. I could not stop reading this. I pretty much finished this over two days. I was reading it kind of around other books because I like to keep a fast-paced book going at the same time as I'm trying to do reading challenges so that if those books lag at all or anything like that, then the thriller uh, keeps me from like slowing down my reading. So that's what this was. It was really good. I give it three and a half stars. While I found it very, very, sorry, <laughs> I'm sleepy. Um, while it was very, very entertaining, um, I think that a little part of the writing style was repetitious, uh, where like every chapter would end with like a reminder of the countdown. Like, although it doesn't matter because I might not even be alive tomorrow, dun dun dun, and I'm like, I got it. So I'm really glad that I finally got to it. And I also like to read stories with female main characters. So that is my final update for tonight. Um, the other stuff for tonight is that we're gonna order vegan pizza <laughs> from Domino's. The vegan pizza in Australia is lit. It is so good, guys. I like to get the uh, cheeseburger pizza which it has like fake vegan ground beef and then like spicy nacho cheese kind of like hamburger sauce, you know like that really good secret sauce that's on hamburgers? That, and then like a whole bunch of vegetables. Um, so we're gonna order vegan pizza and then we're gonna watch some movie that my mom recommended on Netflix with Charlize Theron. It's an action movie. Not sure if it's gonna be good or not, but I'm um, looking forward to it. So I'm gonna sign off for tonight and I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. Hope you all are doing well and that you're reading lots of good things. Bye. Hi guys, it is Thursday morning and I've decided to do the racing to read tag, which was posted up for the reading rush yesterday, but I don't care, I'm gonna do it today. Um, and I've never done a timed challenge before. So I have eight questions, the eight questions on my phone, and I'm gonna give myself a one minute timer and then we'll see if I can do it. Oh my God, okay. Um, okay, so question number one, warm up, a book that stretches your mind. Um, stretches your mind, stretches your mind, stretches, ah, oh, okay. Um, this is Eating Animals by Jonathan Stephan Foer. It's about not eating animals. Okay, number two, start line. What's a book that you started but never finished? Started but never finished? Oh my god. Ah! Oh, 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 okay, this one. This is 
Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon. I'm making my way through, but this is how far I've got this year. So definitely a gold book. Okay, um, three, Sprint, a book you read really quickly. Oh, this one, okay. So this was a recent read. I read it within 24 hours. It's So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Bronson. It's funny, hilarious, and intelligent. <laughs> okay, four, Marathon, what's your favorite long book? Oh, uh, okay, this one, I guess. This is The Reckless Oath We- Oh my god! <gasps> oh my god, no! <laughs> okay, so I only got halfway through. I think that I shouldn't have explained any of the books. So, for the long book, this is The Reckless Oath We Made by Bryn Greenwood. This is an absolutely amazing story about a boy who is a neuroatypical or a man who is neuroatypical and a woman who is physically disabled and kind of this journey they go on together. Five out of five stars, amazing. I am just gonna continue on, but yes, I did fail the one minute <laughs> racing to read challenge. I've never done it before, so I didn't know that I shouldn't explain the books, but okay, let's continue. So, uh, five hurdles. What book had ups and downs? Ups and downs? Definitely, okay, this one. This is The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. Um, it follows two boys who are best friends. One starts to see like hallucinations and the other one decides to go along with it to find out what his friend is really dealing with. And it starts out and it's pretty light, but then by the end of the book, it gets really dark, both uh, like metaphorically and also physically, like in the book. Okay, let's see. Six, finish line. A book you are proud to finish. Proud to finish. Proud to finish. Proud to finish? That would be, the, oh, 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 okay, okay. This is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. This book, as much as I love it now when I was reading it, this book was so hard to get into the writing style in the first 400 pages. And this book is like, yeah, almost 500 pages. So I was glad that I finished it and like really proud that I finished it because I ended up loving it, but I wasn't loving it in the beginning. Okay. Um, gold medal, favorite book you read during a readathon. So I'm gonna say Electric State for this. Um, I just finished it on the first day of the readathon. This is a Swedish translation by Steinman Stollenhag. He writes it and illustrates it. And it is absolutely mind-bendingly amazing. Like the art is amazing. The story is even darker than the art and I just can't get enough of it. His other two books, Tales from the Loop and After the Flood are on my to buy list. So I just think the world of this book and this author and this illustrator, all the same person. Okay. Last, Participation Ribbon, an underrated book you wish you got more attention. Wish got more attention. Underrated book. What? Underrated book. Underrated? Oh, okay. This is The Seas by Samantha Hunt. Um, this one has one of my favorite, most beautiful covers of all time, but the real reason I think it's underrated is because I never hear anyone talking about this. This is about a girl who grows up in a fishing village and she thinks that her father was Poseidon and went to live in the ocean. And there's so much water imagery throughout this novel. It's so good, it's also very dark. She like is convinced that she's in love with her neighbor who is a war veteran who suffers from PTSD this has an absolutely amazing ending. I loved it so much, but I never hear anyone talk about it. And it was so good. I loved it so much. If you liked The Water Cure, then I definitely recommend this one. They have kind of similar water, magical realism, a bit dark vibes. So yeah, that finishes up the, the rushing to read tag. Sorry that I failed it. I didn't know how fast a minute would be. That's crazy. Hey guys, it is Thursday afternoon and I just feel like popping on here and giving you guys an update because 
Oh my god, I've read like maybe 15 pages of Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman, and it has sent me into one of the worst panic I need to get out of the house since quarantine has started because if it was any other day and quarantine wasn't happening, and I know that this is totally not an issue and it's not serious, but I would go to the bookstore immediately. Like we would immediately be driving to the bookstore and I would be buying this so that I could have it in my hand to read physically so that when I'm a sobbing mess at the end, I can cry and squeeze the book that has hurt me so much because I know just from reading the first 15 pages that the writing style is beautiful and that the story is just going to rip my heart apart and I suspect this will be a six star read for me. Like. I am so invested and emotionally pained after only 15 pages that it's making me nervous and this is the only time since quarantine has started that I felt really like I can't do something that I want to do. Okay guys, it is me a few minutes later and I am telling you I'm not going to read this book unless it's in the physical form. I'm just not. So. No, <laughs> I'm not reading anymore. I can feel it like pulling my heart out of my chest and I know it's gonna like stomp all over it. But like the words are so beautiful and like I'm almost starting to cry and I'm like not even that far into the book. So this book is like terrifyingly wonderful and beautiful and I just will not read it unless it's in the physical form. I will wait. Okay guys, so I've decided for the book I touch first challenge, I'm going to put in um, a poetry collection. So I've got three here. So this is one that my aunt got me for Christmas last year, Sound the Deep Waters. Um, it's a bunch of women's romantic poetry, obviously you can see from the Victorian age. Then there's a Christmas gift my husband got me. This is Soft Science by Fernie Choi. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's in all my TBRs all the time and I just never <laughs> read it. Um, and then this one is brand new. I got in the mail recently. Um, this is Hum by Jamal May. And pretty much it's like, uh, it has man as machine and that's pretty much one of my favorite things ever. Um, so yeah, so it's gonna be one of these three for the first I touch challenge. My husband is going to help me. We'll do Hum. Okay, okay, so ready? I'm just gonna spin around a whole bunch and I'm gonna take off my. Ready? Oh my god, I think I'm gonna hit the wall. Oh my god, the wall. Okay. Uh, I touched this one! <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do Sound the Deep Waters, Women's Romantic Poetry. Soft Science will never get read, and Hum is new, so I don't feel bad. So, okay, this is the new one. Call Me By Your Name is out because I love it too much and Sound of the Deep Waters is in. So I just read through this section, which is Love's Bitter Sweets. Um, and the quote here is by Bronte. Love is like the wild briar rose or rose briar. I really like rose briar. Um, and then this is one of my favorite pictures or paintings, I suppose, in this collection. Um, and each poem has an accompanying, like, painting. There's something about rhyming poetry that just makes my heart glad. So I just reached the halfway point, I believe, and I hit dreams and realities, so I think shit is gonna get dark because... I mean, that doesn't look very pleasant. That guy looks like an a-hole of the first order. But um, I did just want to show you two poems that I really, really loved. This is definitely my favorite image. So far, I love the blue angel wings. It's beautiful. And then this is um, I Taste a Liquor by Emily Dickinson. Particularly, I really like the line debauchy of dew. Never heard that before. And molten blue. Molten is one of my favorite words of all time. So that poem just really did it for me. Um, my other favorite poem is this one, A Windy Day by Anne Bronte, and I'll just read it to you because I think it's so, so lovely, especially since we're in quarantine right now, to remember, like, nature. My soul is awakened, my spirit is soaring, and carried aloft on the wings of the breeze. For above and around me, the wild wind is roaring, arousing to rapture the earth and the seas. The long withered grass in the sunshine is glancing, 
The bare trees are tossing their branches on high. The dead leaves beneath them are merrily dancing. The white clouds are scudding across the sky. I wish I could see how the ocean is lashing, the foam of its billows to whirlwinds of spray. I wish I could see how its proud waves are dashing and hear the wild roar of their thunder today. I just think that's so lovely. And of course, it's full of sea imagery. So like I said, I'm about halfway through now and I'm gonna take a break and do something else. But um, yeah, this has just been really lovely to read and I will um, check back in with you guys later. Hey guys, I am here in this absolutely abysmal lighting because we just watched the first episode in the Knots and Crosses mini series because I'm going to go ahead and read Knots and Crosses, the original by Mallory Blackman. So this series is so good. It's out by BBC and uh, yeah, there's six episodes. The first one was so good. Uh, the African themed prints and tribal clothing and just the way that they designed the world, um, even down to that band-aids are um, like dark brown colored instead of like white people skin colored was so clever. It's like the world is reversed and Africa colonized the rest of the world. Um, you know, obviously instead of like the British India Company, the East British India Company. Um, so instead of Britain playing a huge role in colonization, it's Africa. So uh, we start out and we're following a knot who is uh, named Callum. He's white and poor and he is just gotten into like a military academy that is for the first time ever letting in white cadets. And then the cross is, uh, is Sefi. Uh, who is the daughter of a very, very prominent black politician um, who's like in the upper echelons. And uh, it is so, so good. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to try and read this alongside watching that um, so that I can see the parallels. It's probably like an hour since I last spoke to you. I just finished the poetry collection um, and I just wanted to share my two favorite poems um, with you. So I am gonna switch this and I will show you the poems because I really liked them and I wanna share. Okay, so the second poem that I really liked in the second half of the book is Passing and Glassing by Christina Rossetti, particularly the final stanza. So it says, all things that pass are wisdom's looking glass, being full of hope and fear and still brimful of good or ill, according to our work and will, for there is nothing new beneath the sun, our workings have been done, and that which shall be was. I just think that's very beautiful. And then my absolutely favorite one of the second half is Song by Christina Rossetti. So it goes, when I am dead, my dearest, sing no sad songs for me, plant thou no roses at my head, nor shady cypress tree. Be the green grass above me with showers and dewdrops wet. And if thou wilt remember, and if thou wilt forget. I shall not see the shadows, I shall not feel the rain. I shall not hear the nightingale sing on as if in pain. And dreaming through the twilight that doth not rise nor set. Haply I may remember, and haply may forget. I love that, that is just beautiful. It's almost something like you'd want on your tombstone, as morbid as that sounds. But yeah, so I finished this and I think I'm going to give it three stars overall. Um, it's not, it didn't like wow me, but there were some gems in here. So three stars and I will chat to you guys later. Okay, so I have commandeered my husband as the tripod. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Um, it is Friday. And it is the morning. I'm just going to update you guys. I don't know if I have been updating you guys on this one, but this is just a collection of basically little vignettes about dogs who have changed history throughout time. I've been reading it before bed each night, and currently I am like almost done with it. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just really cute. The next one I have is Dogs in Space, which I think will be really good. I've learned so many things about history and dogs and some of the stuff is really cute and some is like really heartbreaking, like Pavlog was a grade A asshole. Um, but yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. I reckon I'll finish tonight or tomorrow night. I'm not really that 
bothered about it. I've just been reading as much as I want before we go to bed. And then the two that I have left, I have Defy the Worlds, and I also have Knots and Crosses. We got some book mail delivered, and I opened it, and this is Toddler Hunting by Kono Taiko. And this one is one of the ones that I was hoping would arrive because I want to read it for the Smart Bitches Readathon, which I'm hosting with Jordaline in August. Um, if you're not aware, the announcement video is on my channel, also on Jordaline's channel. Check it out. We're reading horror, spooky books, and dark books all month of August. There are five challenges and a group read, but this is one of the ones that I'm hoping to read for translated or POC. So this is a short story collection about dark, creepy tales, and the, like, most famous tale is called Toddler Hunting. So it sounds dark and I just really like it because it's gonna be Japanese horror. Hi guys, so I have done absolutely no reading today because we had to go do errands. I had to go pick up some medicine and we did groceries and that is it. So while I was waiting for my medicine at the chemist warehouse, which is like CVS in America, I was browsing their makeup because like what else do you do for like half an hour? Um, and I found this, it's very vegan, and it's a mascara, a black mascara. So I'm gonna try it and see how it is. It doesn't have any perfume, which is the other thing I look for, but yeah. Um, and then I also thought I would do a mini vegan snack haul because of course, since it's quarantine, I am always looking for the next snack. So my go-to snacks right now are banana chips, pistachios, and my favorites, but they're expensive, so I don't often get them, and they're kind of like splurge items. These are little bits of apricot that are in the heart of it, and then the outside is shredded coconut. It is so freaking good, oh my god. Um, and these you can get at Woolworths. Um, and then today we went to Kohl's to see what other kind of snacks they had, and I got pineapple rings, salted uh, cashews, this is the Humble Vegan Cherry Coconut Chocolate Bar, and we already ate half of it <laughs> in the car. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite, but it is quite good. Um, I'm always on the lookout for new chocolate bars because so far I've only found one that I really love. We're out of it right now, otherwise, otherwise I would show you. And then the last snack I got is this um, Protein Sea Salt and Chocolate Caramel Vegan All Natural like Protein Bar. I don't know, it's just called Protein? Um, I've never had this flavor, but there was a whole empty box, so I reached behind and got some of the second box because is it just me or like if there's an empty in front, I think like, oh, that must be the best flavor. And that's pretty much how I buy my vegan flavor of things. So yeah, that's my mini snack haul for you guys. Good morning, guys. So as you can see, I have a new wig. <laughs> Um, this one I've had for a while with the intention of it being like a backup wig or when I want to switch to a new wig and I think I might want to sometime soon but I'm just wearing it around the house for now to see how I like it and to see if I like you know the color and stuff because actually when you wear wigs like not just for fun but every single day it actually feels really weird to switch a wig really suddenly it feels like like I look in the mirror and I don't really think that it's me in the mirror. Um, some sort of, I think, disassociation or dysphoria type situation happens. Um, so I like to ease myself into a new wig by wearing it for a few hours privately, then I'll put the blue one back on, so on and so forth. Anyway, it's not why you're here. Um, this is Saturday morning and yesterday, I'll just be honest, I had really bad cramps and I was grouchy and I read... Um, 20 pages, that's all I read. So I read the first 20 pages of Defy the Stars, um, and I read none of this, and I read none of this. So my goal today is to read the entire Defy the Worlds <laughs> and finish this one, which shouldn't be a big deal. I think I only have 15 pages left in here, so it really, shouldn't be that bad. So that finishes the bookish updates for Saturday morning. Um, and I do have some vegan makeup updates, just very briefly, if you're interested at all. Um, this Emco Beauty uh, eyebrow pen, I love it. I'm gonna switch from Tarte because this is like one seventh of the price. This is like $5 and Tarte is 35, so 
definitely worth it. Um, and then I also am wearing this mascara this morning and I think it looks really nice. It's really nice and buildable. So I'm gonna switch to this mascara, which is very vegan um, from Chemist Warehouse. Uh, Cause the kind that I usually used, you can only get in America and I have my sister ship for some weird reason. Um, and then the last one is Makeup by Mud. This is their lightest shade foundation. I'm wearing it now. I think it matches my skin pretty well. However, I woke up this morning and I had a pimple here. I don't know if you can see it. And then I had like little marks here and a mark over here. And I usually try to take really, really good care of my skin. I use like a Korean skincare regimen morning and night. And I drink lots of water. And so I never break out. That, that to me signals that I think my skin doesn't like this. So that's the update. Um, two wins, one loss, I guess. They're all super cheap. They're all $5 or less. Um, yeah, and let's get reading today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read these two today. It is Sunday, 2 p.m. <laughs> so I'm just gonna catch you up on what I have read and what I'm going to read because I only have 10 hours left <laughs> of the reading rush. So last night I did finish The History of the World in 50 Dogs. I gave it four stars. So while I would recommend this if you're a dog lover, I also don't recommend it because of the controversy surrounding Mackenzie Lee. As I said before, this was a gift to me by a friend, but I will personally not be supporting her anymore. So there's that. Then this morning when I woke up, I had half of Defy the Worlds left and I was determined to finish it. So I made, so my husband made me a coffee and I sat down and I did not get my ass up from the sofa until I finish this. So I did finish it. I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. I just absolutely love this series. Um, the whole AI human love thing just gets me. So like, if you also like that kind of thing, I highly recommend this series to you. I can't go that in depth into this book because it's the second. I will be reading the third soon. My husband jumped ahead of me and he already finished the third in the trilogy and so I just need to read it because every time that I tell him something about this story, he just smirks at me and I don't like it. <laughs> so even though the series has six episodes and I've only seen three, I'm gonna go ahead and read this because I want to not spoil the end for myself from the TV series. Um, I'd rather have the ending from the book. So right now, <laughs> in the last nine and a half hours of the reading rush, I have to read 420 pages. So I think it's doable and I will check back in with you guys later. Hey guys, so it is currently about 5 p.m. and I am 25% of the way through Knots and Crosses. Um, this is actually quite different than the TV show because the TV show ages them up like he's going to university and in there he's just starting at high school. So it's pretty interesting to see. It's a lot different than the TV show. Actually, it's like completely different. So because I know that this is a series, I'm wondering if the TV show picks up from like the second or third book in the series because I think it's a quartet. So yeah, I'm keen to read more. Um, once we get back in, we're about to go for our evening dog walk around the neighborhood um, with the puppies. So... Um, yeah, we're gonna go on the walk and then I'm gonna try and read another quarter and then we'll do dinner So yeah update you guys then hi guys. It is 7 p.m So I have five hours left and I am halfway through knots and crosses So I'm a bit confused because it's written very very young. I honestly at this point really prefer the TV show to the book which is crazy because I Honestly don't think that has ever happened a Blade Runner and Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep are equal in my mind, but I don't think there's ever been a TV or movie that I liked better than the book. So that's where we stand right now. The characters are very young, so it's just like a much different experience. I'm gonna do it, <laughs> I have five hours, and then hopefully I will edit this and get it up. So wish me luck. Hey guys, it is 9.30 on Sunday night. So I just finished my final book for the readathon with Two and a half hours to spare. So, I don't even know what to say, okay? Like, 
This is a quartet. Okay. And when you know that a series is a quartet, you assume certain things about how the plot's gonna go. And the plot didn't go that way. And I like immediately freaked out and checked the synopsis of like the next book. And this book really ended that way. And I've been crying for like a good while. So this book is brutal because I thought that one type of thing was gonna happen and then we were gonna have four books to sort the shit out. But actually, it gets sorted in the first one. And I'm like, well, fuck me, because that's just brutal. So, I mean, yeah, this is definitely a YA book, definitely not a middle grade book, because holy crap, it's very dark, and the author, like, freaking went there, and it's really impactful, and holy crap, like, the first, like, two-thirds of the book, I was like, oh, it's not, it's fine, it's, like, not that dark, but what? Mallory Blackman is doing is building up the characters so that they're like really deep in your heart. And then the last third, she just basically takes your heart in her hand and she crushes it. And it is so brutal. This is probably the most brutal YA book I've read other than When Monday's Not Coming uh, this year. It's so brutal. So I also highly recommend it, but like be in the right mindset because this walloped me out of nowhere. Like I'm planning to edit after this and I was planning to, this to end on a cliffhanger and to me, so that I could like go about my business, but I'm like honestly shook by the end of this book. And I'm like traumatized by the unforeseen like devastation of the end here so holy cow um yeah but on that unhappy note and <laughs> my mascara is running um that finishes up my reading rush vlog um, i read seven books in a week and um yeah you've seen how i've liked them throughout thank you so much for watching if you've made it all the way to the end put an X and an O or an O and an X in the comments down below. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna go finish crying and then I'm gonna edit this vlog and get it up for Monday. So I hope that you all are having a great reading rush and that your heart wasn't just broken by a really, really painful book because I feel like I just got broken up with. Like Mallory Blackman just broke up with me and I'm shattered. And on that note, I will talk to you later. Bye.